What is up, YouTube? News is Carl here. A little bit of a lazy Sunday, but I figured, uh, since I'm not really doing anything, do some work with the 2JZ again. Um, let's see what we got here. So, as you saw in my previous video, I messed up the crankshaft gear, and uh, I got a new one. Completely OEM, apparently. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on, and then we'll see what else I can do to this motor to get some progress going. So if you do follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you got the news by now, but if you don't, I'm going to be attending All-Star Bash at Willow Springs International Raceway. If you don't know what All-Star Bash is, just look it up on YouTube really quick and see what it's about. A bunch of the pros are going to be coming to Willow Springs, and we're going to be shredding. I'm going to be attending, so I'm super excited for that. Um, you know, good old... BMW under 200 horsepower trying to struggle with the pros. We'll see how it goes, but super excited for that. If you didn't know, now you know. I just want to make sure I put this in square so I don't mess it up. That's the last thing I want to do. You know what? I want to make sure I'm doing this right before I mess things up further. Okay, so the crankshaft gear is on. All I had to do was hammer it in. You guys saw all that. So now I can pretty much do all the timing stuff. Everything is still at top dead center. So that looks good. Gonna toss the time belt on and then we'll see. I don't know. Just winging it right now. Okay. So I got the time belt on. It is roughly top dead center. Uh, when I put it on, the cam gear adjusted a little bit. But I mean, all this stuff is a little bit tensioned. So I mean, you guys be the judge. So that's on the dot. That dot lines up roughly with that dimple. And on the bottom, you can see that that line lines up with that dimple. So if I clock this a little bit less, that's going to loosen. So it's, I think it's top dead center. We'll see. I mean, before I put this, this stuff together, I'm gonna give it one more check, but I don't even have the tensioner in yet. So I need to put that on. All right, so now that my timing is pretty much good, I have my new tensioner. I'm gonna put this guy on. Just double checking my timing and everything looks to be good. So I think I can just pull this pin. After I torque these down, I can pull the pin and it should be good to go. Okay, so the tensioner is about 20 pound feet of torque. I do not have a torque wrench that could go that low, so I'm just going to go by feel. Just tight enough, I guess you would say. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to get a wrench and bring this down a little bit so I can pull the pin on the tensioner. That way, it doesn't just whack at it and I don't know, possibly do damage. I don't know if, if I could do that, but whatever. So that's on. So since the timing is pretty much good, I figured I might as well pull this pin for timing tensioner. But let me get a bit for that. Screw it. Three, two, one. It'll be good. Believe. So pin is out. Now I'm pretty much do. Oh. Pretty much do the upper and lower covers. I gotta take the water pump pulley off. That way I can get this lower timing chain cover on. That's better. Okay, so next thing I wanna do, oh, change my clothes. Next thing I wanna do, I wanna get this oil pan all tapped and ready to go so I can install on the block. Um, it's already getting late, so I wanna make sure I do that, do all the drilling before any of the neighbors get mad. So, let's get to it. I also got a couple more things. Uh, I don't know if I showed this or not, but I got a new gasket for the new oil pan. 
Okay, so here's a spot that needs to be drilled on the oil pan. I'm probably going to drill that out to, I don't know, God knows what. Whatever my stepper drill allows me to. And then I need to tap, drill and tap these guys. I already have my drill and tap right here. That is, uh, what is that? M8 by 1.25? Yeah, something like that. And then I have a stepper drill, plus my regular bits and my drill. So, let's get to it. I don't want the stepper drill doing all the work, so I'm gonna step it up to half, my half inch drill bit and then we'll go from there. You know what? Probably isn't the best idea to let the chips go into the oil pan. Whatever, I guess. I guess I'll clean it up later. I don't know. Okay, so half inch bit is done. Now I'm gonna move on to the stepper drill. Let's uh, see how far I can get with this. Okay, so it looks like what's happening, I probably should have thought of this before, but since I'm using a stepper drill and the surface that I'm trying to drill is quite a bit of ways away from the outside of the oil pan, the stepper drill is actually chamfering this side, which I know is not going to be a big deal, but if it's going to be a mating surface for my oil return, I do not want to touch that. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to drill it from the back side. Don't think I'm gonna have any luck with that, but I think it's worth a shot. So I got my return, I think that's the return. And then this is the feed. Then this is the, oh, wait a minute. Between these two, one has to be the return and one is the drain, and I'm looking for the return. So, no, this has to be, this has to be the, the return and this is the drain. So I'm going to just see, kind of mock this up, see how it fits. Okay, so I was originally going to try to drill this out a little bit more. I wanted to check, see whether or not the O-ring was still going to seat on there. But now that I look at it, that hole is a lot bigger than the Dash 10. I think it's Dash 10, but the Dash 10 opening. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And then it looks like, I mean, that's probably going to mate up quite well. So no worries there. Now I'm going to move on to drilling and tapping those guys. So I can get the studs in there. I guess one good thing about this stud that kind of pretty much gives me an idea of how far I need to drill. So something like that. Cool. Let's get this drilled. Yeah, let's see what happens, I guess. Okay, so I have to clean that up. I do not have a torx bit this small. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the nuts that I just purchased, so let's, and then, something like that, and then, theoretically, should be able to tighten the stud oh, so I guess that worked and you know what maybe I should have put Loctite on these guys but whatever it's all good Okay, so I probably should have thought this ahead of time, but now I have a pretty big mess on my hands because I do not want any metal shavings going into my 
oil pump, oil filter, all that jazz, so I need to figure out a way to clean all this stuff off. All I can really do, and I hate to do this, sorry mom, but, yeah. Okay, so that's about as clean as I'm going to get. I mean, there's a couple spots here and there, but I do got a magnetic drain plug. And those shavings aren't too bad, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably still going to clean it later on. I'm just being lazy. But there's a bunch of stuff that I need to clean up on the edges before I could actually take my other oil pan off and put this guy on. So I need to work on that as well. Spent some time going around the new oil pan to kind of get most of the silicone off. There's still a couple places that I don't really like that I want to kind of get cleaned up. So, I need to also clean this off with alcohol. There is a bunch of the silicone and a bunch of shavings. Turn the edging upside down so I could work on the oil pan. Get the sky off, but um, unfortunately it looks like I made quite a bit of mess and there was actually a big puddle of oil all along here. Rest in peace. Nice floor. Anyways, looks like I'm gonna cut the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment down below, and guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.